I guess everybody in the area is feeling the burn, but Joel, I think the big thing is why the turnout today? Why has this guy become such a cult of personality? Well, he's saying the things they want to hear. I mean, he really is. They're, they're, I think he has the same relationship as Trump, only different politics. They're all sick of what's going on in Washington, D.C. They see Hillary Clinton as Washington, D.C. I see her as somebody who can govern. Uh, I, th they want something new, and Bernie Sanders is new. Are you feeling the burn or more of a Hillary supporter? Oh, I'm a Hillary supporter. But in, in terms of what's going on, it isn't hard to see the – look at the young people. Look at the people involved in a process that normally wouldn't get – they were standing outside in that weather, and, and a, a lot of them aren't going to get in here, Chris. So something is happening, and I think, I think that if the Clinton supporters don't realize the power he's going to bring into the convention – they do so at their own peril. So speaking of the convention, what what are you hearing on the ground from a lot of Democrats that are going, hey, man, Bernie's going out there, he's winning the votes, the people's vote, but yet Hillary's walking away with more delegates because of the superdelegate game. Are people upset or just hate the system or what? Well, she's still 3 million votes stronger than Bernie Sanders when you total them all up. So she still has a big, broad support. That being said, he brings out the passion. You know, we're going to find out May 20th whether or not she can fill a room like this in, in the form of her husband, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton's done this before, but you know what? If people like you and I, people that work in the media, are going to find out whether or not whatever venue they pick is going to have people standing around in circles in the cold waiting to get in. She may have more votes, but you look a lot of national polls. You know, Bernie ends up actually beating Trump by more percentage points than Hillary does in a lot of polls. I guess my question is, are the Democrats mad at the system, or hey, this is just Hillary's going to be our person, and here we go? I think it's going to come down to the definition of the campaign, and that isn't going to happen until after the convention, because clearly Bernie's going to take this all the way to the convention. He's going to want to be able to indicate the agenda. He's not going to get the nomination. He's not. But when he, when he gets to that convention, he's going to be a powerful, powerful force of what defines the Democratic Party. A party, I might add, Chris, he's not a member of. <laughs> right? I mean, let's not forget that. And so he's going to have an input into that party. And, and what's going to happen after that is going to define the race between Donald Trump, probably. Curly Hogan's been on your show and mine saying just the opposite. But, but it's going to define the race between Trump and Hillary. And it, Hillary is already saying things that I don't think she wanted to say leading up to a fall race. Potential VP pick here with Bernie Sanders for Hillary or no? No. She's going to go Tim Kaine. She's going to go to Virginia. That's my prediction. Uh, Virginia is a swing state. Tim Kaine is a very pragmatic Democrat. I think everything comes back to the center, just like you saw in D.C. yesterday where Donald went to kneel at the altar of Paul Ryan. Right? Everything comes back to the center. All of this other stuff's done. It's grown up time. That's about it. Hey, we're here with uh, North Dakota Senator Tim Mathern. Senator Mathern, you probably one of the first people to come out and endorse Bernie Sanders. What is it about Senator Sanders that has you so passionate? I met with him in 2014 with some progressive legislators from around the country licking our wounds, wondering what could be done in this country, and Bernie was at the meeting. And I said, how about you running for president? And I think he has turned on our country. He has turned on our social justice value base. He's coming to North Dakota, a deep red state. And this means we're on a roll. Well, and I got to tell you, I mean, you go outside here today. We're at the Romano Plaza Suisse. The line was thousands and thousands of people. It's freezing outside. You kind of alluded to this, but what is it about him that's got this kind of cult of personality thing that's just resonated with so many people across the country? I think he's talking about the basic human rights issues. He's talking about food and shelter and education and health care and decent paying jobs, a clean environment. It's what people are really concerned about. And uh, I think, especially all these young people, it just blew my mind coming into this place. All the young people, they're hungry for a value base. Bernie is offering it. Talk about this, because you see some of the states where Bernie goes out, he'll win the, the popular vote, yet doesn't get as many delegates as Senator Clinton, or Secretary Clinton. Your thoughts on the process won, and do you feel like the people that are Bernie backers are getting kind of hosed by this deal. Well, a lot of people in the establishment of the Democratic Party are sort of aligned with the Clinton campaign. 
But this is an election. This is a democracy. Bernie and his supporters have to make the case. And I think coming to Fargo, North Dakota, coming to Bismarck, North Dakota, it's making the case. And our superdelegates are going to say, whoa, can we be thinking about Bernie Sanders? And I'm saying, yes, we should be thinking about Bernie Sanders. So with that being said, January 7th, obviously, is the caucus here in North Dakota. If Bernie comes out as the winner of the caucus, would you call on Senator Heitkamp then to come out and support Bernie Sanders with her superdelegate vote? No question. And it's June 7th. But no, no question. Um, when the people speak, I will ask all of the superdelegates to follow what the people say. This is going to come across as a gotcha question. It's not, because I'm being very sincere about it, because I've asked some other people this question. What's Bernie Sanders? He's been doing this now for quite some time. 1991 became in the U.S. House. What's his greatest accomplishment as a public servant? Well, I think his basic accomplishment is keeping the social justice values alive in an environment where there haven't been a lot. And, and that is important. You know, while there is this battle going on here that's very, very highly politicized, somebody has to tend the fire. Tend the fire of what is the value base of America. And I think Bernie Sanders has tended that fire. And now the people are open. And he's coming to the top. That's what he's done. Stay with us. It's coming up next. You're going to hear from all the Bernie backers. Why do they love Bernie Sanders? Why has he become such a cult of personality? And much, much more as always. You One of the things I enjoyed most about today's rally was getting a chance to actually talk to the people that are feeling the burn in our community. And yeah, there was a wide variety of reasons why people are backing Bernie Sanders.